Good morning and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 22 of the M&T podcast. Now, I know right now you're looking at this, if you're watching on the YouTube, and you're thinking, hold on, there aren't empty bottles of wine and they aren't slurring their words and what's going on? What has happened to the podcast we have come to know and love? Tifla, why is this week different? Well, it's the morning. We started this at 7.45 <laughs> and um, I wasn't allowed to open any wine or make an espresso martini. So I had to make coffees instead because we've got a lot going on, which we will explain. Um, but this week's podcast includes a lot of different talking points, uh, like uh, how we would uh, do a festival. Yeah, I loved um, that. Halloween, um, dinosaurs. Favourite um, food experiences. Food. And what would you do if you were working in Ibiza next year? Exactly. Loads and loads so of things. Much. Um, but before we delve in, we need to remind you one very important thing. Yes. If you have not had the opportunity yet, please make sure that you have subscribed, whether that be on uh, Apple Podcasts or on YouTube as well. Or Spotify. Or Spotify. Uh, and on Apple Podcasts that you have rated and reviewed us. If you do that, just a few little words, just to say what you think of our little stupid podcast, you are in the chance, in with a chance... <laughs> I haven't been drinking, I promise. Mm -hmm. In with a chance of winning a bottle of wine. And we are announcing the winner in next week's podcast. So you've got a week to get your reviews in. How exciting. Um, so yeah, I guess we better crack on. Yeah, I guess and, we And uh, we will see you in the episode. See you in the episode. <laughs> Boo! It's Halloween. Ooh. <laughs> Our Halloween special. Special. It's really not. Spectacular. That would indicate that we've got Halloween related things to talk about. We, don't. we really don't. Um, good morning. Good morning, my dear. Oh, why? And welcome to episode 21 it's of seven, the MT podcast. 7.46 in the AM. It is 70, 40, what? 60. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is starting well. Uh, would you like to explain why we are doing a morning podcast? Yes, so we have literally got out of bed about 16, min uh, yep, 16 minutes ago, um, and we are filming and recording the podcast with coffees this morning, we are because we have La Cafe. a busy day ahead. Mm. Um, we do. <clears throat> you may or may not know that it... Uh, Ibiza has gone into curfew at 10pm at night now. Um, so we, for the past few weeks, have been arranging a Halloween barbecue with some of our friends. Um, and we had arranged for it to be in the daytime because the night times are, are chilly now. So mm -hmm. we were going to start around 2 o'clock and go until midnight or whatever. Um, but then the curfew kept changing. So we have decided now to start at midday until 9.30 p.m. because we're now having a children's party by the sound of those hours. <laughs> um, and so we have to go and do things and stuff this morning and get ready and prepare and decorate and things. Yeah. I feel as if you rambled a little bit there. Sorry. Um, so long story short, we're doing an early one because we've got a busy day ahead. But you asked me to explain why. And, and you did a grand job. I just, it, for a while, I didn't know, I didn't know where you were going. Drink some more coffee. <laughs> yeah, it might cheer Please. me up. Do you think coffee has the same sort of effect as wine does? In that it just sort if of if it's like... in a martini, yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, what are you drinking today, sir? I am drinking a double ristretto Nespresso Americano. There's a lot of O's there. God bless the Italians. I am drinking a um, creme brulee Nespresso Americano. It's good having the coffee machine, isn't it? Yeah, it's good having it back. How How is the creme brulee flavoured? It's better in a espresso. Yeah, because I guess it's sort of, by being in a large drink, it's sort of watered down a little bit. Yeah, it is. Definitely, because there's water in it. So yeah, can't like, see the sea. Slightly, it's so foggy. I know. This is what happens when you... I think the lighting looks good, though. Does it? Yeah. Good, um, because I've just rolled out of bed, so my face doesn't look let's, good. Let's, let's talk about that. You're in your full black onesie. I'm in my white robe. It's her, this, is, this is us, in a nutshell. It, exactly. Black versus white. Exactly. Dark versus light. You are the yin to my yang. I'm the light to your dark. Yep. And that. 
So yeah, slightly different podcast this week in that... It probably won't last as long. It won't, it, yeah. It won't go on and on and on because we're drunk and rambling crap. But we're having coffee and we're still going to, well, probably still talk crap. I like those podcasts that ramble on and on and on. So do I. Um, I'm excited about today, are you? I am very excited about today. I made a cheesecake. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, <laughs> I sent out a menu. <laughs> oh, God. Like, it, for the people that know you, this will be come as no surprise. But for those people who are still learning uh, what Tiflar is like, this small, and it is small because, you know, we have legal limits to how, how many people can come to a house. True. Um, barbecue that we're having. Tiff has created a menu, sent that menu out to our yep. guests. Yep. Uh, there's been multiple um, bits of media that have been <laughs> sent out to people as small teasers. We and should things. have made a trailer. That would have been good. Yeah, that would have been effort, though. Yeah, true. Um, but it was... Oh, I just like to get people a bit excited because there's not many things to excite people at the moment. No, and actually... And so I like... I made a little WhatsApp group. I sent I, I sent Halloween GIF yesterday, a little a link to a, the Monster Mash on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, and just getting the people a little bit hyped. We like doing that sort of thing, don't we? We actually talked yesterday that we, without blowing our own trumpets, we are good hosts, whether it's that people come and stay with us or whether it's that we're just putting on a barbecue we we like to do it well we like people to have a good time and have yeah. fun and so jack and bill were talking about when <coughs> they came to dubai um, oh they, they had a great they time. went out for drinks the other night and they both messaged me separately and were like we were just talking about you because i like liked their story um and they were like how much fun they had in dubai when people come over and yeah it's because we want people to have the best time and i've always wanted to do that Yep. And so, yeah, a little bit of hosting. I love it. When I met you, you were a host. That is true. Uh, team leader. Team leader of the host team. At Ibiza Rocks Hotel. Smashing. Good times. <laughs> How's your coffee? It's really good, but you did that thing where you went to drink yours at the same time I went to drink and mine. So terrible <laughs> podcast etiquette, isn't it? Terrible podcast etiquette. When two etiquette. people have a drink at the same time. Um, so tell me. <clears throat> Is life just a playground? <laughs> Tell me! <laughs> um, uh, how do you think my week has been? We'll go back to that one yes, this time. good one. I think you've had a very good week. I think there's been a few highlights, a few things that have made you excited. I think um, all round, I think a very positive week for you. Work is going well uh, and you're striking a really good balance of work-life balance but while still achieving really good things with work. So mm. like we've said, it's not just switching things off and then falling behind with work in order to enjoy life. Yeah, You've really done well to sort of balance that. This week um, we've been healthier and we've done things together to get a bit healthier and to get a little less drunk every day. <laughs> Um, a little less drunk every day. And I think that makes you happy. You're happy when you're healthy. like healthy and you enjoy it when I'm doing it alongside well, you. It's just because it's helpful. It's easier, isn't yes, it? Yes. If you're sat there drinking a beer and having snacks and doing stuff when I'm like eating a lettuce leaf, then um, yeah, it's hard. We both do well when we're doing that sort of thing together. But I know that that really impacts your happiness generally. Yeah. You've been excited about preparing for today's barbecue, but I think the biggest thing that you've that have met, has impacted your week is that the gym has arrived and is set up in the back garden. Yes, so excited. Um, if you are watching on the tubes, then you need to go back to the last video that got uploaded a couple of days ago. Now you're watching this, um, and it is the setup of our home gym. I've always like a home gym is like. A bucket, not a bucket listing. It's a goal for people. It's like it could be things a bucket that listing. people like strive to have. Having a gym within your own home, let's not like play it down. That's a big deal. It is, and I'm very lucky <clears throat> um, that we that we have that you've let me have one, basically. Yes. Yes. You're welcome. Yeah, and if we if we'd have chosen any other house from our list of ones we looked at. We wouldn't have... Um, it's under the sofa, it's okay. Uh, we wouldn't have... Um, Let's talk about that. <laughs> we wouldn't have... Got one. No. Sorry, I rambled because I saw a spider. Yeah, 
Um, it's watched yeah. it. it. It's becoming, and let's not go too deep into it, but it's a little bit buggy season, isn't it? There's it's a different a types of, of bugs. As we've gone from summer into winter, we've got less mosquitoes and more spiders. Luckily, there's no big, sp- like no, really they're not big. big. They're, like the biggest one we've seen is probably the size of like what, like a fifty p piece or something. something. Like that. And you I, need to stop looking. I did have that. a dream last night about a really big one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little nugget sound by the <laughs> we'll, we'll use. That'll be my ringtone. I had, did have a dream last night about a really big one. Really big spider. Did you? But I'm doing really well. Um, you and are. let's talk about that in a minute. But home gym, mm. very excited. And I have reached out to my old coach to nice. put a plan together for really me. Really good. And then we're going to go on hikes and walks and do the cardio that way. I did get a question. I th- think yesterday it wasn't a question for the for the pod but somebody um and forgive me whoever it was but i think someone commented on our youtube video Mm. of the gym just sort of saying how how do you get yourself self-motivated in a gym that's in your own home because a lot of people find that by going to a class or having a personal trainer or something that's what motivates them so i know it's early days and we haven't really used it yet but how do you find or how do you foresee your motivation and sort of discipline levels being knowing that it's just in the back garden. So I've, that's exactly what why I have reached out to my old coach because I'm putting those steps in place before I just get complacent that it's there. Um, so she's going to write me a four day a week plan and I have to check in with her every nice. single week. So you have to do it. Mm. And so having that accountability level um is really important and then i know that when i get into it i'm i'm really motivated once you once you are in a habit there's very little stopping you like yeah. once the once you've got the ball rolling yeah you you are you yeah. are one of the most disciplined i mean it's why you were a personal trainer you're yeah. a trained personal trainer so um so that's like yeah and then obviously once everything like obviously when you're working out really well and I, I might, I don't know, I, I used to work out first thing in the morning and I don't know whether I'll still like to do that, but, you know, I'll figure out a rhythm. It, because if I get it done, then it's, then it's over with and I've kind of got that bit of the day done. But you um, work, work best in the morning, don't you? I also work better in the morning. But I used to train in the morning, then go to work. Like, hmm. so, you know, it might just work, do, it might just happen that I do it all in the morning and then go for a long walk in the afternoon or go down to the beach and do my balance bit. But um, it all comes together when you're like doing the healthy food activity and you're, you know, listening to a good audio book that's like motivational or something. It kind of all pieces together and then it all, then it's kind of like skyrockets. Yeah, it it makes doing the whole thing easier, doesn't it? Yeah. If you're doing it all together. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I'm so excited to use it. It's good stuff as well. Like it's proper so, gym I was stuff. So it's not that like it's just brand new as well. I've yeah. never, you've ne- I've never like held a brand new piece of equipment. Like I've no never, one has used, never before. used it, and so I'm very, very excited, and I know that I'm very, very lucky. I think we're gonna find that people will want to use it. Should I do like a four day fitness retreat here? I already know some sort of people that have gone. Oh, I might pop up to yours. Who? Well, Silas. Oh, did he go and see it? Yeah, he, he, well, he, we were, let's get, let's go right back to how Silas has seen your gym. Yeah. Um, we had the TV put on the wall yesterday. Yeah. That's my excitement for the week. Um, and a friend of ours came around and did that because he's got the right tools and stuff. And anybody again who saw us putting our wall up will know I do not have the required drill to make a hole in solid stone walls. Because yours only goes round and round. Mine only goes round and round, whereas his goes in and out and round and round. <laughs> um, apparently it's all about technique as well. Um, anyway, um, so he came round to put the TV on the wall, and that looks great, and I'm very pleased with that. And we just got on to talking about like tool kits, and, and Fun you, and, uh, stuff. Sorry, I was I was didn't you say almost anything died then. There. I didn't say anything then because I was so stunned into boredom. So anyway, <laughs> and this is why I'm I'm rushing through it quickly. So we were talking about toolkits because you know that's what men do when they're drilling holes in walls. Yeah, I left. Um, and I just mentioned that we were using it 
yesterday, my toolkit to put the gym together. And he was like, oh, I haven't seen that. So I took him to see it. And he was like, yeah, I think I might just be coming up here and just benching some of your your weights. You've got the terminology Fine. down. Have I? Benching <laughs> some of your weights? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, that, so all in all, that's my excitement for the week. Nice. How's my week been? Uh, your week has been... You've been really busy getting the house together again. Yeah, it's like we've got into an, like another phase of getting the house yeah, done. Yeah, because like... obviously your parents left. We did last week's podcast. Um, and then we've obviously had a really healthy week. I know that you sometimes really struggle with that, especially in the beginning, because you're not into that rhythm of being healthy. So um, I just really like snacks. And beer. And beer. Um, but you did really, really well all week, and so I'm very, very proud of you. Thank you. And thank you for helping me, because that does help me. Um, but yes, you've been getting the house together. We've had a load of deliveries this week. We've had a Wi-Fi extender. We've had a TV box. We've had the bracket for the wall. We've had various things. You've been sorting out the garden again, mm. sawing things. I've been working. I bought a saw this working week. Working on the outdoor. I was working on the outside table and I was just watching you be a man. Yeah, using a saw, <laughs> using cutting a saw, down a tree. Cutting down a branch. That was very exciting. Um, yeah, it has been busy. But it's I think like... the house is really coming together and I think you're really happy yeah. that that's happening. Yeah. It just feels as if more of what's really nice about this place is things that we've done, yeah, if that makes sense. Not, yeah. It was already a lovely it house. Yes. It was a lovely house when we chose to, to move into it, and that's why we kind of liked it. But for many, many weeks, we lived in it with zero character, zero hour stuff. Obviously, then our delivery arrived, and that's lovely. But, you know, pe things don't stay in their first home that you give them. You sort of give them a home, and then you go, actually, that's not where that's going to live forever. I'm going to move it, I'm going to tweak it, I'm going to yeah. change it. And yeah, the gardens garden was lovely over the summer, but inspired by my parents who were here who like to sort of prune a garden um you know we were out there sort of getting it ready for winter and sort of moving things around and yeah it feels a lot more like it's ours because things have been moved by Into us the and place that you want them yeah, yeah. that's really good <clears throat> um, so yeah i'm i'm pleased i'm happy i'm feeling almost by the day much more settled into the house you also cooked a whole chicken on the barbecue i did a so, whole chicken so that's a that was um a christmas point. dinner prep <laughs> Um, that was the, so Whole I'm bird. I'm I'm practicing early doors of um, barbecuing a full bird. We still need to do beer can chicken. Yes, I do want to try. I do that. want to do that one. Want, that's but, the, um... you know, it's us, so we, uh, it has to be done on the barbecue. Yeah, but that went well as well. Yeah, really. Takes well. a while though; uses a lot of gas. Yeah, that's the problem. You could just whack it in the oven. You could, and that would use a lot of electricity. But you don't run out of that. No. Exciting stuff. It is. It's riveting we, stuff. I'm glad everyone's listening in today. 16 minutes in. Um, I know a lot of people sort of talk about, oh, if you want to know what life is like in Ibiza, like tune into their YouTube channel. But what this is, is this is what like getting into November is like in Ibiza. You could, you know, forget the um, forget the the nightclubs and the and the parties and stuff. I mean, they didn't really happen this year anyway. No. But we're very much having to get used to this is life and let's let's get ourselves ready for it. Um, talking about parties, I have a question um, from Ginger Saltis on Insta. Solstice. Sol sol Why? There's no S or anything. Isn't there? No. Oh. On Instagram. My anyway, I've probably yeah. saying it wrong. Send they've, me a, they've asked send me a voice before. note with um, with how to actually say it. Anyway, um, you have you you have a, a festival. You're doing a festival, and you've got three rooms, or like you're doing. Oh, a, okay. You're doing an event, and you've got three rooms. Um, like a music festival. Yeah, like a music festival. Which musical artist would you invite? Could be DJs, bands, both. They can be dead and alive. And where would you hold it? Oh, interesting. I love a festival, um, and I've had this randomly considering our pedigree and our background Are you okay? I've, I've it's early morning and i've had a coffee double uh, espresso i as did well. it we, was we a double. Two in. so I'm, I'm i'm in there Woo! <laughs> um 
I've done more of the sort of like English festival scene than you have. Yes. You've not done the dirty field. Absolutely not. In the rain. Fuck off. In the UK summer. No. It's so good. I went to Tomorrowland and it you, was sunny and glorious. And, that, and immediately you pissed on my fire. I went to Tomorrowland instead. <laughs> the biggest and best dance festival in the world. I also won it. And, I and didn't you didn't pay, pay for it. You didn't pay, pay to go. You bitch. That was amazing. There were 17 stages. Anyway, you've got so three I've got rooms. three. So as soon as you say sort of festival, because of my experience, it's not a festival. It's just an event. It's like, well, I'm going festival. Okay, so you you're upgrading. So you've got three stages, yeah. not three rooms now. I've okay, gone three great. stages, um, and because of my, I haven't done one in years, but because of my love and my sort of my stories that I have from. English festivals like Reading and Leeds and V Festival and things. I've never done Glastonbury though, so that's on the bucket list. Um, mine is definitely going to be in a field. Doesn't really matter where. Ugh, it is outside no. and it's in the UK, but it's in the summer because British summer and because it's mine, I can I can guarantee the weather. It is sunny. Oh, fair. Um, yeah. No rain. Not um, at all. No, not a bit. Maybe a little shower in the evening, but no. not not enough to not enough to make people wet and cold. Just a little bit, because actually that's quite nice at the end of the day. Anyway, um, so I've got three stages. I'm going to go with one stage, two tents. Okay, for Christ. The stage is going to be Muse, because Muse at a festival, best band by far, Mm -hmm. hands down, no arguments. You haven't seen Muse. When we do see Muse live, you'll understand. Yep. Um, And it's also the first time I ever saw Muse was at a festival, so they're going there. In my Say Muse some more. In my tents, I'm going to have Muse. Um, <laughs> tribute bands. <laughs> Just circular. No. no, I would have, because Dead or Alive, I can do it. In one of my tents, I'm having Prodigy. Nice. Obviously, everyone apart from Keith from Prodigy is still alive, but he was the front man, so he kind of needs to be there. Yeah. Prodigy in, in one, and then the other ten... Prodigy from what years? It really doesn't matter. Okay, cool. Because they never really wavered from their style. But yeah. we're going fat of the land kind of era. Oh, I don't know what you're talking 90s. about. 90s. Cool. We're going... Oh, we're yeah, going I'd 90s. go 90s. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and then in the third tent, I'm going to have a Dubai-style brunch put on. Ah! <gasps> That's cheating, but brilliant. But who's going to play? Um, you can have anyone play it. Just a jazz band. A jazz band. Yeah. You're not going to like whack a Jamiroquai in there or something? Jamiroquai. Jamiroquai. Come on, as, use your as noggin. The, as the brunch, brunch band. band entertainment. Yeah. That's old. Oh, brunch is very that, clever. right there, I'm happy. I've got, I can get off my tits to Prodigy. Yeah. I can reminisce and have one of the best times of my life with Muse. But when I'm hungry and I need a drink, I've got Jamiroquai got in my tent and I've Jer- got brunch Jamiroquai in the Jamiroquai and a brunch. Who wants to come? I'm in. That's good, yeah. I'd probably just stay in brunch, though, if I'm honest. Fine, but that's still wonderful. That's really, really good. Like, mine, like, I'm going, like, I'm going to be, <clears> like, <throat> under the arches in London in one of those dark and dingy clubs and have Lovely. actually three rooms. And then, but they're all going to be, like, wildly different. I'd have, like, some... <laughs> underground like dark and dingy like solomon in one and then like whack tiesto in another and then i'd probably do a band in the other what um, band would you put on biffy oh yes whack i biffy know where i'm spending my time at your event you're being biffy or tiesto biffy or tiesto yeah that would be good if i thought about it more and rambled like you did i would probably come up with a better concept but I think under the arches in London. One of the hardest me. things about events and festivals of that size is that you do have to pick. Sometimes you'll have amazing artists clash with each other, and you're like, "Well, I've got to pick. I've I've got to go and see one." Yeah. So. Um, and that is tough. Yeah, yeah. When you're at a festival and you're like, "Oh, but I want to see them, but I also want to see them." Yeah. Yeah, I had a couple of clashes at Tomorrowland. Yeah. Because you got a newspaper delivered every day by like oh, nice. the characters because they yeah. have people walking around and like it was like news from yesterday, like photos that they'd taken, news from the day before, but then like a double page spread of um, today's lineup in the, oh, nice. on each stage. That's very and cool. it was also on the app and everything, but it was cool to have the newspaper yeah. and people collect them and they were free and stuff. 
Um, so I'd sit there with like a copper berg <laughs> outside my tent. Also, I'd, I'd taken like a tarpaulin so that when we pitched our tent, I put the tarp out the front to save extra space. Yeah, like a like a like a gardeny kind of. Yeah, I had area. like a terrace on the front of my um, tent, so we had extra room to nice. chill. Good idea. Um, yeah, really good. <clears throat> Um, and so I used to sit there with my newspaper and, and kind Lovely. of see who I wanted to see that day. One of my um, best memories from a festival, again, sort of similar, I think it was V Festival and we sort of went as a big group. So everybody, sort of, uh, probably about five or six tenths worth of people of various sizes mm. and we all sort of made sure we arrived together so yeah. that we had the tents all facing Pitch in. Pitching a circle. And you have, yeah, a circle in the middle where you're going to sort of do your yeah. drinking. And I remember sort of day two or day three of this festival, it's similar to now, it's like eight o'clock in the morning um, and I'm, I'm eating a pot noodle and I'm drinking yeah. rum from the bottle and you're like, getting ready for the next yeah, day. My, and... I've got a Tomorrowland highlight on my Instagram. So if anyone wants to see, I had, so I won, the, I won it just very quickly. I won it. You couldn't come with me because you had a job. Um, and so I took my friend Emma and we had the best time and the highlight is incredible. So go and watch it. Really good. Lovely. Yeah, good nice. question. That was a really good question. My mum has just messaged me a question. Oh yeah, go on then. Um, now bear in mind, she is an hour behind so I, yeah. she knows that we've got up early to do this one. Yeah. <clears throat> Question for you both for the podcast. If you could wave a magic wand and be anywhere else right now for a dream holiday, where would you go? Not the Maldives. Oh! She's re- literally written that. Not the Maldives. You've done that. Wave we- a magic wand can be anywhere I want. Um, is the Bahamas cheating? Because it looks like the Maldives. <laughs> Is that the kind of holiday you want? You want that beautiful beach kind of tranquil? Well, if it's still like how everything is today, then a tranquil beach is probably the only place. I you can think go. if if you're able to wave a magic wand, then let's say it's in normal world as well, not COVID world. Weirdly, I'd pop back to Dubai, on a, but on a holiday. Yeah. On a holly bob, yeah. and I'd stay at the Anantar on the Palm and have a lagoon. Lagoon room, lovely, and then go to brunch and see your everybody. Wonderful, and do that. That's nice. Good. I think I would do like a city, maybe like New York or something, oh, or even London. The other thing even, was a city, yeah, for me. Like doing an actual holiday. To, I'd have, I've never holidayed in London. Never well, stayed done, in like, London. Day trips. Yeah. You've never stayed like in a hotel in London. Well, only for like. A wedding or yeah, true. for work yeah. or something. But I've never gone to London and gone, I've got the week here or a long weekend. Let's be proper tourists over the period of I'd a few days. That. Never done that before. Go to the West End. I've always go gone nice like, dinners. because <gasps> I grew up in Essex, we would go into London and be there quite quickly. But to do a thing, maybe attach another thing to it, like a dinner or see something and then go home. But never done a, let's spread this out and let's like do all the touristy bits. Yeah. And London's amazing for that. So I'm going with London and you're nice. going with Dubai. Yeah. Lovely. Because only because we're not allowed to do the Maldives. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, like mum. It. She it literally messaged that as we, as we started. That's a good one. Nice. Can we pause? Because I really need a wee. I'm sorry. Cool. No, no, we can Yes. No, no, it. we're doing it. No. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time again. And as we <laughs> all know, coffee goes right through you. <laughs> Uh, more than wine does. So um, please excuse us while we go for a very quick break. We will see you in a moment. Welcome back. Do you know what's really annoying? What? Trying to get out of a onesie when you really do. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. There's memes that go around. You know when girls wear really pretty play suits and stuff when they yeah. go out to brunch. I or, do wonder. And then sometimes. you're literally completely naked in the bathroom. But this is. It is definitely one of those advantages of being a male. Is whatever we wear. It's quite easy. You've got easy access unless for a, in a Unless you're in a morph suit. Unless you're in a morph suit, That's and I don't have a morph suit for today. That is. Um, we now do have another espresso, yeah, so well, we're going on for three. Welcome to part two. I have ditched the robe. It's such a good robe that actually eventually you get too hot. Um, so instead I've gone with if comfies you, with socks. If you ever want a robe, buy one from the Waldorf. Yes. It's, um, 
I'm very jealous. Well, you, you had the opportunity to buy one and you chose not to. It's just really expensive. Yeah, that robe, again, for those who watch on YouTube, you will have seen me in it in the first half of today's podcast. Um, and it is the best robe in the world. Um, we went on a staycation in the UAE. Where was it to? The Waldorf. Where? Rack. In Russell Kamer. Um, with the Ashmores. And... Um, Myself and Jess, that these were the robes that were in the rooms. And we were like, and oh we, my God. We all wore them for sort of like breakfast and to sort of sit around and have drinks and stuff. And it was lovely. Yeah. And myself and Jessica went, well, I'm just going to buy one um, before we leave. And yeah. And so and I you did. did. Amazing. So we're on to the, we're now on to espressos. Yes. So are we now doing quick fire everything? No, bosh, bosh, bosh. I no, I've just got more kind of party related questions. If, party related if, questions. If you okay. want to carry on with those quickly. Yeah. Um, this one's from Noel. Ah, oh, Pierre. No, not Pierre. Oh, I don't sorry. even know who that is. Pierre Noel. Oh, is, uh, hold on. <clears throat> carry on. Anyway, what's your favourite party situation? A, ra- a rave, a speakeasy with small tables, a rooftop bar? Um, beach, what's your ideal scenario <clears throat> for a party? Oh, Could good just be question. A festival? Well, yeah, I mean, we've we've already touched on festivals. That's a great party sort of vibe. I do love a gig mm-hmm. vibe mm-hmm. when you're sort of in a room or in, a, in a, a venue with thousands of people all experiencing the same thing at the same time, going through the same sort of musical euphoria Journey. and like everything. So yeah. um, you... For me, you can't beat that. But then on the other side, like I love the little get-togethers that we have here. Just a few friends, re- good music that you're choosing, yeah. drinks. I like and Pike's like, house party. Pi- yeah, well, Pike's Saturday, feels like a, that's it. It feels party. like you're in somebody's house. Love, so, yeah, yeah I, I like big and s- small. Like <gasps> That's why I like Pike's and the ones that we do here is because people aren't filming. Yeah. I like that kind of place where you're like, you're having yeah. too much fun. Like everyone could be. And then, yeah, a couple of situations in Pikes, yeah, people do film like when the fat lady sings or, yeah. you know, when fat boy slim is like playing a banger in this tiny little room about the size of our lounge. But most of the time people have their phones away. They're talking, you're yeah. meeting new people and you're just having a bloody good time. It's funny, isn't it? That actually, I think some of the best moments you have is when, People are more connected with each other of course. than they are via something else. Nobody gets that feeling by watching someone's Instagram story. Nobody watches no. the Instagram story of someone at a see. gig and goes, oh, I feel like I'm there. You yeah. go, oh, that looks really cool and uh, what a great, great thing for you to be at. But you don't have that feeling. You have to be there and you have to be experiencing it. Yeah. So I do love parties and that feeling, but... I, no matter whether they're big or whether they're small, I just love that you're in a moment with great people having a great time and sort of losing losing yourself and what time it is and all sorts of things. Nice. And I have a, one last Ibiza-based one. Okay. Um, this one's from Knights of the Turntable. Um, Regular questioner. Yes, thank you very much. It's for me, kind of, um, but I'm going to read it out. It's a two-part question. Firstly, what advice would you give someone who wants to come over for 21 and work the season, as there's more to it than just partying. So you mm-hmm. can help with that one. And secondly, working for Ibiza Rocks, did I ever get to spend time with Andy and Dawn? And did they tell us any good manumission stories? Um, which they were lucky to go to back in the day. I'm oh, so wow. jealous. You've always said that you wish you were sort of 10 or 15 years older yeah just for that just for <clears throat> and that and that you were able to get over here for some of those parties in the 90s yeah, and 90s. early 2000s and stuff yeah i'd love to be here for the 90s like party scene because yeah. it was just nuts um i never really spent too much like one-on-one time with andy and dawn you were always in we are often in situations where you're all kind of there um, together in, in Pikes after a gig or something like that, but not really any one-on-one time. I've heard plenty of manumission stories, <laughs> which I wish I was part of. Um, Sonny also tells some wonderful manumission stories. He does. Um, so that's always good to sit and chat to him. Um, and then people coming over to work this season. Yeah, it's a good question. So in preparation for next year, yeah, like what advice would you give to someone who's thinking 2021... I'm going to go and 
I would work say on a beta. get out of San An sometimes. Because obviously everyone, ba- a lot of people base themselves either in Bossa or in San An to be a worker mm-hmm. because that's where the work is. Um, but people spend their whole summer just there mm. and partying. And I just say, at some point, get out and go and see the rest of the island. Hire a car. I would go as far as to say, don't, if you're now right now researching the Ibiza scene, mm. don't limit yourself to basing yourself there either. But if you're a worker... That's not what they said, though. People coming out for the 2021 and work the season... The season doesn't, to me, I'm going to argue, the season doesn't necessarily have to mean I'm going to be working for a bar or nightclub or What else do you a, work for? A restaurant or a bar in another town. No. Maybe you come and work in one of the beautiful vineyards. I think you've got the wrong idea about... <laughs> what I'm, I'm doing my best here to argue that you... Because we've said all along, you don't have to come to Ibiza just because there is nightclubs and bars open. No, but that's where the work is in summer. Not entirely. Okay. It's right. where the majority is. Absolutely. Okay. My advice you is... You could be a quad bike tour guide. You could be a jet ski tour guide. Yep, sure. I would say don't limit yourself right now. Because what if 2021, you're saying that's what I would, What if 2021 doesn't have a nightclub scene? God then forbid. Then there won't be a worker scene. But what if you're wanting to come and do a season? What if you're thinking I can get over there and I want to spend the summer there and I want to work, but mm. there isn't a nightclub scene? Yeah, find something else. Do you just say, oh, well, you can't? There's nothing well, else to no, do. Well, no, you can do a bunch of things. Like, like you say, you can work in restaurants and... Um, like the smaller bars and stuff or there's like hiking tour places and other other things I would say broaden your research into what else can you do in Ibiza and don't think that it's only being in San An and yeah promoting true. a club true there is other things that you can be doing true that I don't know what those are <laughs> but no, there is. There is loads of things. Obviously, if there is, we no didn't go to a scene, single n- nightclub this summer. Did you have a bad summer in Ibiza? No. That's because we were still able to go and do really lovely things. They don't all have to be based around nightclubs. That's true. That is true. But if they are open next year, get over See it. They, the parties are going to be good. Yeah, I bought those tickets for Amnesia. That can, uh, we for still any got day. eight tickets to Amnesia that next year. I can go to Amnesia eight times. <laughs> yeah, I'll stay at home. <laughs> And prune my bushes. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Uh, I have a question. How? And this is for you. How would your mum describe what you do for work? I don't think she knows. <laughs> Try. Um. I think she'd just say I do social. She does social media. I love that. Is it is doing social media the new I work in IT? That's totally true, isn't it? Because I, I don't think people say it that much now. I work in IT because, well, what the fuck does that mean? Everyone works in IT. I feel like IT. they just like put a com- turn a computer on. Yeah. If you work in IT, then you fix computers, right? But technically, everyone works in IT. If you use a computer no. to do your job. Well, you could argue that because when that first came out, when it was sort of... I work That's in funny. IT, people yeah. would go, that means you work on a computer. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it meant you work with computers. Is there a difference? Well, yes, because you can work on a computer and be a DJ or or you can fix problems with computers. I, th- I thought that was working in IT or setting up a network in an office. That's working in That's IT. That's how I think it's now evolved. Yeah. But like... Is I work in social media now that because I do so, so I uh, do social I do media. social media. Cool. So you like posts and you Do you remember when you used to poke people? That's not a thing anymore, is it? I liked you poke people on Facebook, you That's nu- not a thing nudge anymore. Nudge people on <clears throat> MSN. Oh, MSN. <laughs> MSN Messenger was BRB. I wish I could BRB people in uh, real life. BRB. Like BRB. I well, was, that's what we do when know, we go for a wee during this podcast. <laughs> BRB. There are people probably listening to this right now that don't know what BRB means. I'm not going to tell them. No way. Yeah. I thought there was a BRB emoji, like a little button, but I don't think there is. No. Um, so, how, how would your mum 
describe what you do for she a living. She does social media <laughs> and that's as far as it goes because my mum doesn't even have Instagram. Your mum barely has the internet. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't listen to this, I'm safe. Um, so yeah, it would just be, she does IT, I'm, I don't really know. She does IT now? Oh, shit. You work in IT? Oh, yeah. She does social media, I don't really know. That would be That's what she'd funny, say. That's funny, isn't it? That yeah. was from Alice. That's I a good I thought it was a really one. good question. I've, do to you talk. want my question from Alice Yes, for you? please. I love Alice's questions. Name three things that people assume about you when they meet you. People assume about me yeah. when they meet me. Yeah, like for I don't, well, I don't know what people assume no, about what, me. What do you think they do? I well, I talked about this on last week's podcast. I think people assume that I'm an extrovert, and that probably yeah. Because I think if people if people know me via my social media, like have watched me or have watched our vlogs or anything like that, I'm quite, you know, I'm. I, I have a laugh. Yeah, I'm quite out funny there. and stuff. But that's obviously me editing into a ten minute video yes. my highlights of my day. Whereas yes. the the other twenty three hours and fifty minutes <laughs> I sit alone in a dark room. Um <laughs> And that's my comfort zone. And then I'm brought out to make a YouTube video. <laughs> and then you put me back in my cupboard. Yeah. So I think people, I think people will, I'm always worried that I'm going to sort of like disappoint people if they meet me and they only, because it's happened here that people have met us and they only know us via YouTube. And then I think they meet us in person and they're like, oh, he's not quite as. You're disappointing. Yeah, he's quite <laughs> quiet because I'm not. I, I'm not chatty and I am quite happy sitting and listening to other people talk and stuff. Yes, yeah, you are. Cool. So I think that people assume I'm a bit more extroverted than I am and I'm not. So yeah. spoiler alert, if you do meet me and have a chat with me, good luck. It's like blood from a stone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, I, don't, I honestly don't know what else people would assume. I think me. they assume that you, you can still get them a discount at Apple. <laughs> People do. I mean, it, I, I did joke because only a couple of weeks ago, um, Apple did their latest iPhone event and I got DMs that night. Shock. From people. I always did. It's one of those things about working for Apple is that old friends, even people who weren't even old friends. Just people like, coming I was out never the woodwork. Come out the woodwork and go, hi there, how's it going? And you're like, yeah, haven't spoken to you for 15 years. What do you want? Just, just, just say it, mate. And it'd be like, I see there's an iPhone and I'm like, block, delete, bye-bye. And yeah, this year I still got some. Madness. So you're like, so you're, you're interested in me enough to use my discount, but you don't know that months ago I left Apple. Yeah. Um, so no. No, fuck off. So yeah, people probably assume that I can still get them a discount and I can't and I didn't anyway. Um, I don't know. I think maybe people assume now that I live in Ibiza, I'm a bit more of a party than I am as well. Yes, and you're not. Because I, I like a night in a nightclub, but maybe one or two a season. <laughs> and then funny. I need the rest of the winter to recover. You're so funny. Yeah, that's Because I'm not they actually think a party. You're a par yeah, they think you're like into, like into dance music. That's a really good one, actually. Yeah. Like into and I don't that. mind it, but I would, I think, as I've already said on this, I'd rather go to a festival for a weekend yeah. and nothing else for the rest of the summer. That'd yeah. be, I'm fine with that. That's a good question. Thanks, Alice. Good, Alice. Thank you. That's really, really I'm good. I'm going to throw it there back to Alice. What did you assume about me? Oh, God, yeah. Message it through and we'll put it in next week's podcast. That's really funny. Um, before you met me. That's really good. I like that one. <laughs> um, I've got two quick fire questions left. Go. This is from Sam Jones on Insta. If you were made to eat one for the rest of your life, what would you choose? A pickled egg or a pickled onion? Pickled egg. Only, so I went with instinct there. Only because I have a story about a pickled egg. Oh, go on then. Um, yeah. pickle, if, if I had time to think about it, I'd probably go with pickled onion. Because they're quite a good little snack and they're quite small usually, aren't they? Yeah. They're kind of like olives. You can just sort of have a few and just... But they're pickled onions. Yeah, they're quite nice. Two things I hate. You like a pickle? I don't hate pickles. Do I you always take, give my pickles do you take, away. Do you take gherkins out of your cheeseburgers at McDonald's? Yes. Why I don't I give my I get pickles them? to... We don't go to McDonald's. Oh, smash a McDonald's. When we went though. to Kangarahe, the other... You know when we are hung over tomorrow, out. can we get McDonald's? That means I have to go and get it. Oh, they don't deliver here. No. Oh, I missed a buy. <laughs> oh, God. Um... 
But I'm going with pickled egg because every time I even just say the word pickled egg, it makes me smile because I have a story. Okay, tell and it then. It's one of the boys, boys, boys trips. Oh, fuck. Pickled. Oh, I know the story. We just had, we got drunk and we walked past the fish and chip shop and I went in and bought everybody pickled eggs. And John Ashmore <gasps> blamed the fact that he was sick the next day. On that on egg. the fact that he had a pickled egg, not the fact that he drank an entire bottle of whiskey to himself. <laughs> Uh, and so we often joke amongst the boys of um, sort of about pickled eggs. Wow! I know, great I'm story. sure everyone's rolling on the floor with laughter right now. <laughs> Do you know what? Some At people least... have pulled over their cars to laugh out loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's one of those that you had to be there, and I don't care. All right. Um, this one's. What from... about you? You have to pick. I know you you hate both, but you've got to have. I one. think it will have to be the egg then, because I can do. I can eat an egg. Pickled eggs are quite nice. I've never had one. Do you like? I a, don't go buy me one. Do you like a hard boiled egg? Could you eat like a hard boiled yeah, egg? I can just have take a the shell boiled. off yeah, and just yeah, eat yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like can that. Can someone but take like, the shell off for me? Well, a hard a pickled egg is already De-shelled. peeled. Yeah, but it's been in pickle juice. Yeah. So all it is is that it's a hard boiled egg, but it's a bit vinegary. Ugh. It'll be the egg because I can power <clears> through <throat> the pickle to get to the egg. Yeah. The inside doesn't really yeah. tend to... Yeah. Um, okay, great one. Um, last question from me. Um, this is from Bill. Thanks, Bill. I know that you are now an avid listener. Yeah, love Bill's question. Love Getting it. Getting a question from Bill. This is the highlight of the podcast already. Uh, if you could be any dinosaur, what would you be and why? Velociraptor. Great question. <laughs> Favourite question. <laughs> Velociraptor. Absolutely. Easy peasy. Velociraptors were... The wolves of the dinosaur era. They worked as packs. They were intelligent. Is this what blue is? Blue is a velociraptor, okay, yes. Got you. Great question. Any dinosaur-related questions are a winner for me. Um, I have. I, I only got a few questions through, and I've got one left here. Go on then. And this was from Sam something, and so I apologise. I only wrote this Sam is from Sam. Sam something. That's yeah. nice. Uh, question for you both. Restaurants and meals can bring obviously amazing memories and some of some unwanted memories too. <sighs> Not including your wedding breakfast, what was your best food memory? And also, do you have a worst food memory? I don't think the we- wedding breakfast <coughs> would be up there as a food memory. I mean, we've talked. No, I did write the menu. So I think we've talked about. It. There was a great meal, really, really good meal. But um, so I don't think it's up there. Um, big food memory. You took me to the Burj Al Arab for my mm. birthday. Um, and we were complete dickheads and ordered sh- stuff we'd never eat. I had like an octopus salad to start and we ordered a bottle of wine each and didn't even finish them because we're that ballsy. Um, oh, I missed it by times. I know. Um, so that's a really good food memory. But also stuff like really good food memory, even here, like going to Kangarahe with friends, like just it's not necessarily the place. It's sometimes the people mm. that you're with. Um and there's so many bad ones because I'm a, I just hate restaurants that cannot be good at serving food. Like mm. you're pa- it's what you do. You're paying four times the amount it would make to cook it yourself because you're paying for an eating out experience. So it, there shouldn't be an issue. And it's like, for example, something came up on my time hop the other day. We were with your parents at Stars and Bars in Abu Dhabi, yep. and all three of us got our meals, and your mum didn't get her meal until all of us had finished. Yeah, see, that's just not acceptable, is that it? That is, un- I was I not, don't remember. I that. was live tweeting Yeah. to some, get someone's see, that's, attention. That's the sort of thing, I, I think it is more service related than food related. I'm, I was trying to think when I saw this, have I, I can't really remember a time when I've had something served to me and I've gone, oh, I, like I can't eat that. I think I'm either I'm lucky or maybe I'm just tolerant. But I haven't it had something tolerance. turn up I've and had go. Quite bad meals. I'm I can't eat that or it's terrible or it's made me sick or anything like that. Oh. I think your biggest memories, like you say, tend to be you've gone out for a, an eating out experience and the service hasn't been good. Has anyone like ever poured a drink on you or anything? I had uh, once on a flight. I had a flight attendant. Uh, spill a glass of red wine over me. No way. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. That's and that's one word. of those and ones. Red where wine. I, the, talking about my tolerance, I was like, it's really, it's okay because it didn't destroy anything. Like you're in your flying clothes. I'm like, it's really like these are my slobs because I'm comfy. But you, you could milk that if you wanted to. It's red wine. Yeah. You could go. I am not paying for this flight. You are upgrading me on my next flight, 
and you will provide me with champagne for the entirety of the rest That's of the flight. Scary. If you wanted to, if I was a Karen, <laughs> then you could do that sort of thing. But I remember just the, the flight attendant being like, I am so, so sorry. And I was yeah. like, really, it's no big deal. Just get me an extra glass. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think any bad food, but like I've probably over ordered something and I've gone, oh yeah, I can, I'll love this because I'm a foodie in inverted commas. And um, I think overeating at a restaurant not is, is like your own but problem. But like, no, but uh, no, not overeating. I mean, like picking over ordering. A, no, let me finish. Like picking a dish that you wouldn't normally have. Such um, as? Because you want to be fancy. Probably like that octopus salad. You ate it. I know, because it was nice. But you could go to a restaurant and be like, oh, I really like scallops. See, that's not something that or I I'm... do anyway. I don't... I I will always pick something that I know I'm going to enjoy. I don't think I get ballsy at a I restaurant. Do. Because... Oh, we used to a brunch because... Yes. It's an all-you-can-eat. And if I don't want to eat it, and if I try like, it and I don't oh, yeah, like I'll it, no sushi. problem. I'll try the sushi. don't even like um, sushi. Brunch is the perfect opportunity to try things, and if you don't like it, no big deal. We did always make a rule at brunch that you have you to try to. something new. Yeah. And so you do end up figuring out that you like something. Like, I've never had, I know it's so simple, but like dim sum. Yeah. Those little steam balls in the metal, in the wooden pot. And like, I'd never had that. So at brunch, I was like, oh, I'll try some dim sum. And then I re- like realised I really loved them. That's the story of your They're life, like though, Tiff. dumplings. You, <laughs> there is loads of things that you go, I don't really think I'm going to like that. But it's because you've never tried it. Well, I don't want to... And wa- most things that you try, you like. I don't want to waste stomach space. <laughs> so. Well, this is the thing. I'm not going to order something <laughs> if, you're, if you're going a la carte. And so you're just, like, you're just getting something off the... One Why dish, would you yeah. order something that you might or might not like? You've gone out. That's not the time to be trying things. No. That's the time to be going, I know I'm going to enjoy that. That's going to make this evening even better. I'm going to feel great because I ate it. Why would you at that point go, I think I'll have the cod soup? Why would you say cod soup? Because it sounds disgusting because it would be. But I bet someone yeah. somewhere does a cod soup. Yeah. Um... That question was about experience as well, though, right? I can't remember um, what you said now. It was your memories. Yeah. Best food memory and, and worst food memory. And I always said in Dubai, because there's like 10,000 restaurants in Dubai, probably more now, if you didn't, if you had even the slightest negative point, you just wouldn't go back. You, you don't have to. There's too much choice. Because even if you're like, oh, like if you're in like a small town, you're like, oh, well, that's actually the only place you can get a curry. Where in, in Dubai... Mm. You've got a thousand other yeah, places you I'll can get go. a curry. Yeah. Um, I just feel bad that I couldn't go around to all the restaurants. I think that's why, that's probably part of the reason why the service levels in Dubai are next level. They are. And if you if you get a bad one, you really know it. I mean, if, if you get a bad one, yeah, you just wouldn't go back because why would you? The restaurant next door, like... It's ready for you. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. So up there as your as your best is probably like Burj Al Arab. That was a great. That's food. a great food. It's memory. a great meal memory, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a great food memory because it was a special occasion. It was a surprise, um, and it was really nice. It was nice. Really, really nice. Yeah, loved it. Loved it. Lovely. I like I say, I didn't get many questions sent through, so that's kind of all I have for you. Well, love. that's good. Well, we we're actually racked up the time there. We've we done have. well. Very different type of podcast. We haven't suddenly got blurry and, and rambling. I mean, we ramble anyway. We're not ending but... with shots. Unless you want another espresso. I think that's enough for now. Um, but we have got a busy day ahead. We have. So by the time this podcast goes out, we're... the party will have happened. Send us your love. Um, because we'll probably Can you have send us hang- a pumpkin emoji. Yeah, pumpkin emoji to celebrate Halloween and, and to commemorate the event that we're having this evening at our little house. I say event. A couple of mates are coming around and we're, we're cooking we're some bath, wings. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we're cooking bat wings. Not cooking bat wings. That's what they're called on the menu. For <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> um, so, yeah, as we said right at the beginning, I haven't yet, but I'm going to do it in the intro. Don't forget to put your reviews through. This is your last week and uh, opportunity to win a bottle of wine on us, Whispering Angel, no less. So make sure that you are popping over to Apple Podcasts, giving it a rate, giving it a review, subscribing, share it with your friends, do all of that, and we uh, we might just be sending you some wine. Mmm, wine. I miss wine. All right. And we'll be announcing that in next week's podcast as well. So if you want to know whether you're winning, you definitely need to be listening to 
next week's. Oh yeah, is that when we announce? Next week's Exciting podcast. Exciting stuff. Yeah. Okay, well we'll see you in the next one. Episode 22 next week. Oh, we might have a guest. We may have a okay. guest. Okay, alright then. Bye! Bye.